welcome. Good evening. My name is Tyra Carr. I'm the assistant principal here at Ocean High School. Thank you all for joining us tonight. This is an important night because it's kind of the first step for our class of 2026 to get their foot into the Ocean High School. Um, our amazing school counseling department is here to provide you with a wealth of information to get you started on your journey as high school students um, in the 2022-23 school year. Uh, we're going to provide you with a lot of information in terms of scheduling, in terms of courses offered here, and then there will be time at the end for you to ask any questions that you may have. Um, so welcome, thank you for joining us on this very cold evening. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Ms. Kutoka, who's going to get the presentation started. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Welcome, everyone. Thank you again for coming out tonight. My name is Laura Dubatoka, and I'm um, just going to get us started here on our presentation. So just to introduce you to all of the counselors, um, Mrs. Dina Lenz is our guidance director, and I'm Laura Dubatoka. We have Mrs. Jacelyn Whiting and um, Mr. Giancarlo Messia. So this is a breakdown of, um, tentatively, we think this is how it's going to fall, but um, we break down our classes by alphabet. So um, if your last name begins letters A through C, Mrs. Lenz most likely will be your counselor for the four years you're here at Goshen High School. Last names D through LI, you would be my students. Mrs. Whiting will have students LO through RI. And Mr. Mejia will have RO to the end of the alphabet. So high school, very exciting time in your student's life. Um, they're going to go through lots of changes as they come through here. Um, you're going to watch them grow from childhood to adulthood. They're going to be getting a job, many of your students for the first time, learning to drive a car. Um, you're going to see changes Socially, their friend group probably will may change and grow over the time they're in high school. They're gonna you're gonna see a lot of emotional maturity in your students, physical growth. You're gonna be going through lots of sneakers and coats, and your son's gonna probably ask you for a razor. He's gonna have to start shaving in high school. So um, lots of changes. Uh, you're also gonna see your students go from being a little more dependent on mom and dad for things to wanting to like spread their wings in high school and, and show some independence and we encourage that and um, of course we're here to help guide them as they look into um, their future after high school um, regarding uh, college and career planning so we believe strongly in the three-way partnership um, we feel like students have the best chance for success in high school when parents, students, and um, the school work together. So these are the ways that we communicate with um, families at the high school. It's probably very similar to what you're used to at CJ Hooker. So every five weeks, you will get a report on how your student is doing academically. Um, the first five weeks of each marking period would be a progress report, and then the, after 10 weeks, you would get a report card. Um, at the high school, we do not mail any of these home, so they're all, they're all accessible on the parent portal. Um, we're also available to help you to set up phone conferences with teachers um, or with us at any time. Um, we arrange parent-teacher conferences in the fall, there's usually an, um, a set time where parents can set up meetings with teachers, but if at any time during the school year you would like to have a meeting with your child's teachers, um, you can facilitate that with us through the guidance office. Um, Google Classroom has become a thing now, right? We're all using Google Classroom even after um, coming returning to school for in-person learning. So that's a way for you to be able to access your child's schoolwork and see um, work completion and how they're doing. Um, we do still conduct Google Meets. I know if 
families are not comfortable coming into the building. I've done some parent-teacher conferences still that we're using Google Meets for that, so that's fine. And uh, of course, email. You know, you can leave a phone message for a teacher or call us on the phone, but it seems like the quickest way to get in touch with somebody today is still email. So ways that we work with your students to help them to adjust to their new high school. Um, next week, we're going down to the middle school and we're gonna do an orientation similar to what we're doing with you tonight um, to go over uh, their, their um, entrance into high school. Tonight is our parent orientation and again, we're glad to see you here. You'll see um, in August, usually like about a week before school starts, we have a freshman new student barbecue um, outside, fun. Um, students will get their schedule, walk around. Um, as long as we're, we can with, with everything that is constantly changing with this pandemic that we're in. But um, for the most part, students can get their locker that day. They can try it. They can walk around and uh, many times uh, their teachers might even be here that night if they walk around and can look at their schedule. Um, we usually have National Honor Society students here on hand to help um, take your students around. Um, the first few days of school, actually in ninth grade, we do something called a freshman seminar. So your child's gonna come home from school, the, probably that first week, it's usually a short week, right? Um, and they'll say, oh no, I don't have any homework. And they won't be telling you a fib. Um, the first few days of school, we do something called a freshman seminar just to orientate them to high school. And, and all of their core classes, each teacher takes a, a part of the program. We do some group guidance with freshmen. Um, this year we came into their class and we played a Jeopardy game, which was kind of fun and uh, introduced them to some aspects of the high school and the guidance office. And lastly, uh, we meet with our freshmen in the fall to um, have an individual appointment to try, start to get to know them and to see how they're doing and uh, how things are going here at the high school. So these are just some of the topics that are discussed at the freshman seminar. So managing your new schedule, you know, they're not on a team like they are in the middle school. So um, being able to navigate that new schedule, using their locker, maybe coming up with a time when um, a good time in your day when it's convenient to get to your locker and still get to your classes on time. Uh, we'll go over guidelines for written work, uh, school safety, uh, use of the library and computer orientation, just behavior expectations in our school setting, school rules, who to go to if you're having problems, you know, dealing with school problems, who, who is the nurse, where is her office, um, our school social worker, school psychologist, um, uh, administrators, people who are here to help. And um, how grades are calculated and about academic integrity at the high school and about just you learning to you have effective time management. So this activity is always held in uh, the first few days of school. So we'll get calls sometimes over the summer, parents and students who are new to the high school wanting to know what do they need for the first day of school? Because I know in the younger grades, a lot of times you get a supply list from your teachers. But here you'll learn that uh, the first few days of school when, when uh, the kids are going to their classes. So really just having a notebook and something to write with the first few days is sufficient. So I'm going to turn this, the next portion over of the evening over to uh, Mr. Mejia. Thank you. All right, good evening. I'm Mr. Mejia, one of the school counselors here at Goshen High School. Um, my portion of the presentation is to talk about the graduation requirements, um, among other things. Um, so the first thing you'll see here on the screen is 22 and a half. 22 and a half is the minimum number of credits needed for a high school diploma in New York State. Uh, please keep in mind that most students will exceed this amount. Uh, we try our best to schedule our students um, in a way that by the time they reach their senior year, the, the end of their senior year, they can graduate with somewhere between 22 and a half, sometimes even up to 30 credits, depending on their course load. 
Um, some, some important points here. Uh, full year courses that meet every day earn one full credit. Uh, full year courses that meet every day earn a half credit. So the biggest example of that would be like a PE course. Semester courses that meet every day for a half year earn a half credit. Um, those are pretty much like your electives, your health courses, things of that nature. Okay, so these are the required courses for graduation. So these courses have to be taken in order for a student to qualify for a diploma. Um, the middle column here will be the Regents Diploma and the far right column will be the Advanced Regents Diploma. Um, those are two different tracks um, and a lot of that stuff is going to depend on the student's performance throughout their freshman and sophomore years. Uh, so you'll see for English, for example, a student will need four years of English. Typically that's English 9, English 10, English 11, English 12. Uh, social studies, same thing. A student would need four credits in, in social studies. The way that's broken down is global history 9, global history 10, U.S. history, and then as a senior, a student will take two social studies electives, uh, those being economics and participation in government. Next up is mathematics. So New York State only requires three years of math for students, but we usually require or recommend a fourth year for students. Um, typically, the math tracks are algebra, geometry, and algebra two, but we have some variations to that. And we're going to go into that in a couple of slides here. Uh, next up is science. So students will need three credits in science in order to qualify for a diploma. Again, typically that's living environment, earth science, and chemistry. But again, there's there's some variation when it comes to that. We as school counselors, we talk to your students, we get to know your students, and if they're considering a career in medicine or STEM or engineering or anything like that, we typically will uh, require a student to take a fourth year of science. Okay, next up is LOAT. So LOAT stands for languages other than English, and this is where the regions track and the advanced regions track kind of differentiate the most. So for students going for a regions diploma, uh, they, just, they would just need to complete one year of a foreign language, which many students are actually doing right now during their eighth grade year. If a student is interested in the advanced regents diploma, it's very important that they complete three years of a foreign language and complete what's called a checkpoint B exam, which is essentially the final exam in that level three course. Art and music, students are required to do one credit in art or music. Um, health and wellness, students are required to take that course typically during their sophomore year. Next up, you have your health elective. Here at Goshen High School, students can choose from one of three courses to satisfy the health elective. Right now, those three courses are first aid CPR, intro to nutrition, and critical health issues. And then lastly, we have physical education. All students in high school have to have gym on their schedule every year that they're in high school, and that totals uh, two credits at the end, and students are required to have that. A couple of exceptions here, and I mentioned this before. Um, integrated course in mathematics, science, or technology may be used as a third required credit in math or science, but not both. Um, so we do have, I think we have one course that satisfies that requirement, but um, again, this is a conversation that you'll have with your school counselor as you're kind of going along through your high school career. Uh, students are required to earn one credit in foreign language. So that's important for students going for both the advanced regions diploma or regions diploma. Uh, you have to have at least one credit in a foreign language. Again, students seeking the advanced regions diploma who do not want to pursue the three credits in a foreign language do have an option, and that would be taking five credits in either art, music, or CTE instead of those two credits in the foreign language. So again, instead of going the foreign language route, students have an option of using five credits in these particular sequence, art, music, or CTE. Regents exams, um, students that are going for the Regents Diploma are required to satisfy five Regents exams. Uh, those five are English Language Arts, one math exam, which can be Algebra, Geometry, or Algebra II, uh, the Global History exam, the U.S. History exam, and one Science exam. Students that are going for the Advanced Regents Diploma have to do eight exams. Those eight would be English Language Arts, Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2, so a very big distinction, whereas you see for the Regents Diploma it says OR, for the Advanced Regents Diploma it says AND. The Global History is still required, the U.S. History is still required, and for Science, instead of just the one Science Regents, you would need two of those. And as I mentioned before, the 
final exam in level three of that foreign language is called the LOAT exam, and that is required for, sorry, it's called the Checkpoint B exam. That is required for the advanced regions. So here at Goshen High School, we do have a nine period day. Each period is 42 minutes in length. Our lunch periods are periods five, six, seven, and eight. Technically, school is dismissed after period nine. However, all teachers are required to stay for a extra help period 10 that is available to all students. So you'll notice that our day ends at 727 and period nine ends at 217. So beyond 217 and 221, we have what's called period 10, and students can stay with their teachers uh, until 247. I always recommend that the students check in with the teacher ahead of time because sometimes they may have meetings and other obligations. So it's very important that the student kind of make that arrangement with the teacher before they stay for extra help. A typical freshman year schedule will look like this. A uh, student will have English, Global Studies, Math, Science. The science that a student would take during their freshman year will have a lab. So if a student is taking living environment, it will have a lab component to it. We try our best to kind of link that with the PE so that they go on opposite days. Uh, world language, lunch, art or music. Uh, and then we try to squeeze in an elective wherever possible. So this would be what a typical schedule for a freshman looks like. We do utilize what's called a, uh, what we use an A day, B day, C day, D day, E day. It's a six day cycle that we kind of utilize here. The main, the main thing to know is that some of the courses will alternate. So in this particular schedule, you'll notice that period five on A days, this particular student will have living environment lab. On B days, the same student during period five will have PE. And those two courses will sort of alternate for the remainder of the school year. So one day the student will have live environment, one day the student will have PE. Every F day, uh, or in this case, I'm sorry, every E day in this case, the student will have what's called a science study hall. Normally the room doesn't change, so the student would still be reporting to that same classroom, but instead of doing a lab assignment, the student will have some time to work on some additional assignments during that time. Um, but again, the main thing to know is that in this particular schedule, period five, is the one that alternates. It doesn't always work out we're in period five, um, but it is important to know that the students do have a little bit of an alternating day schedule here. You notice also extra help is down there in blue. Uh, again, that's period 10. And again, it's very important that students, if they're struggling at any point, do take advantage of extra help. Okay. The last thing I'm gonna go over is a transcript. So this is a transcript also referred to as an academic record. The transcript, what's going to be on here really is the students' final averages in the grades, in their courses. So their quarterly averages are actually not going to be on here. The only thing that you'll see, and you'll see it under the column that says FA, is a student's final average. If that course has a Regents exam attached to it, you'll see it right next to that where it says SE, and SE stands for state exam. To the right of that, you'll see something that says CR, and you'll see either a 1.0 or a 0.5. That just represents the number of credits that that course is worth. So if you scroll down all the way to the middle here, you'll see that this particular student, and this is a senior, um, has earned 24 and a half credits, right? Right below that, you'll see the Regents exam. So where it says testing information, you'll see that checkpoint A, that's the final exam that a student takes in level one of a foreign language. Below that, you'll see the Algebra 1 score, the Living Environment score, so on and so forth. So these are the students' regions exams. On the top right, you do see the weighted GPA. That is given to students during their senior year, um, and that's what they'll be reporting to the colleges when it comes time to apply. Additionally, you'll also see the students' rank. Here at Goshen High School, we do report ranks in deciles, so we never tell a student that they're ranked a particular number. We just tell them what percentage they fall with in their graduating class. So we usually say like top 10%, top 20%, so on and so forth. Uh, the other information that's on here is the class size. And again, when the students are applying to colleges, these are all the things that they're gonna be asking. So. And that is pretty much it. From here, I'm gonna pass it on to Ms. Lynn. Hello, 
and again, thanks for joining us tonight. It is very cold out there, so we appreciate you coming. So we just saw kind of the end result of a student's four years in high school, that high school transcript for a senior with all the courses listed, all the work they have done. But now we have to rewind a little bit and talk about how they get there. So our scheduling procedure, the steps we'll take with your students will begin one week from today. So next Thursday, we will visit the middle school. The counselors will present to the students in their social studies classes. And again, that presentation will look very similar to what we presented to you tonight. Then um, students will be provided some course description information that is also available on our website. And they will have the opportunity to look through those descriptions with you. Um, and you'll have the information from tonight. They'll have the information from next Thursday. And you can start talking about the courses that your student will take as a ninth grader. On February 10th, the counselors will return to the middle school. And with the um, help of the eighth grade counselors as well, your student will pick their initial course selections for ninth grade. And I stress initial because as a follow-up to that activity, they will have the opportunity to meet with the counselor in the middle school, go over their course selections, capture any changes they wanna make or if they made an error, or occasionally students have trouble logging into school tool and then they come down. We just did this activity in um, December and early January with our high schoolers. We had a few students I couldn't get logged in and those will all be captured so that students have those course requests in the system. Fast forward, after all of that happens, all of the verification happens at the end of the school year and into the summer, the schedule is built. Your student's schedule will be run through our student management system and they'll have a schedule that, as somebody mentioned, they will get at the freshman barbecue in August. So what happens when we build a schedule, the counselors work through um, the student's schedule after their run and address any conflicts the student has. So if your student is very eager and we have this happen sometimes, students sign up for 10, 11 credits, it's impossible to fit in a school day. So obviously, we hope that they're going to make some choices before we get to that point, but if your student has overscheduled or asked for too many courses, the counselors will work through the schedule, place required courses first, right, before those electives. So if your student's very involved in the music program or wants to take additional art courses, those will come secondary to the requirements for graduation that we saw a few slides ago. If there's conflicts that we aren't sure, we don't know your student yet, so if we have to resolve any conflicts, students have the opportunity to meet with us when they come to school in September, and we can resolve those conflicts over the first couple weeks if there's two electives perhaps that fall at the same time. All right, so the process will start and go all the way through summer. Little note there on the bottom, we often, as counselors, get requests for certain teachers from both students and parents. And unfortunately, we're not able to honor those requests. Um, I always say to students, imagine if we let everyone have a certain teacher or a certain period of a class, we wouldn't be able to accommodate everybody and kind of where do we make that cut off, so. I mentioned the course descriptions are available online. So there's two ways to access those course descriptions from the district website um, you can click on the academic link, and then there's a link to the course descriptions, both for the entire high school and then narrowed down for just freshmen to make it easier for you. And then from the high school website, if you navigate to the guidance page, those same links are there as well. So two ways to get to the course descriptions. Um, and you know these courses are edited over time, so we point these out to students when we visit them in the high school for program planning, just to make sure they're really looking at the courses and choosing courses that are good fits for them versus, oh, my friend's taking that class, right? We wanna make sure students are making really informed decisions. Here's a visual of the core courses for freshmen in the core areas. So English, we have our English 9 and our English 9 honors course. In social studies, we have Global 9 and then um, Global Nine Honors. So this is this second one. The second option is a two-year program. And I'm going to talk more about that in a second. In the math category, we have Algebra, Geometry, or Geometry Honors, Science, or Science, an Honors Level, Living Environment, and also an Honors Level there. And languages other than English, we have Spanish One for students who perhaps did not take Spanish. 
in the middle school or were not successful in Spanish. Um, Spanish 2 for those students who complete and want to continue with that foreign language requirement or sequence, which you know, a, a sequence in foreign language also or often um, comes into play with college admissions. So as students are making that decision, do I go the advanced regions track with that foreign language? That's something that we advise them if a student wants to perhaps drop Spanish 2 in the middle of ninth grade, we're going to advise them that that decision as a ninth grader could kind of come back to them later. So, um, and then we also have French 2, and this year we ha did have French 1 in the high school as an offering, but that is not something that's offered every year. It depends on how many students need that first level of French. So a little review of honors, AP, and college level courses. Honors courses, as you just saw, we have honors courses available to ninth graders and all throughout high school in the core subject areas. Dual enrollment college courses are those courses that are offered here on campus. Students earn credit, Goshen High School credit, but they also have the possibility of registering with the um, college that that course is through and earning college level credits as well. Now there is a fee for dual enrollment courses and families pay the colleges directly. That doesn't go, you know, filter through the high school, um, but the student could again earn high school credit and college credit at the same time. It's a great opportunity because often the tuition is reduced as what the student would pay if they were on campus. So great opportunity and you see the list of relationships that we have in the courses we have there on the screen. Advanced placement courses or AP courses and um, you saw some of that on that transcript and AP in front of a course is an advanced placement course. These courses are college level courses but the student isn't paying a college, they're rather paying the college board to take the exam that happens the first two weeks of May. This year, the fee for an AP exam is $96, and the credits awarded for the completion of AP courses is dependent on the score on that AP exam. So a student who feels confident in taking a lengthy test and scoring well in the score range one to five may choose that option to I'm going to take an AP course. If a student isn't sure about earning credits based on their test, they may choose a dual enrollment option instead. All students who register for an AP course are required to take the AP exam at the end of the year and, and of course pay for that exam as well. And payment is always early in the year in November. And you see the list of courses we have for AP offerings on the screen. So now we'll drill down and talk about those core areas where we have honors um, courses available and upper level courses. So in social studies, we have our AP World History program. This is a two year program. So if students select to come into ninth grade in the honors course, the World Nine Global Nine Honors, that's part one of that two year program. So if your student very interested in social studies, they are ready for rigor, they're going to do a summer assignment and be ready to work at a faster pace than that regular global class, this would be the right option for them when they choose their courses. Students are making a two-year commitment, so that's why I stress those points. So if your student maybe isn't ready to make a commitment to all those things as an incoming ninth grader, they may decide to make a different choice in the social studies category. At the end of 10th grade, students take Again, the AP exam in May, um, and they'll also take the Global History Regents as well. So again, I just stress it's a challenging course, um, so students really want to select well so that they don't have to change their schedule when they start with us in September. And we saw some of that this past year where students had selected, they were very eager, and then the summer assignment didn't get done and they wanted to change the schedule. And sometimes the schedule change is very easy and then sometimes it rearranges the whole schedule which isn't good for your students so in the math category if your student is currently in algebra they would have the option to schedule into geometry honors if they meet the criteria that we see here so they have to have at least an overall 80 average in their current algebra one course and not have any two marking periods below an 80 in that course as well so if a student comes into the high school in the honors program in the math category, to continue the honors program, they do have to maintain an 85 average in each of the honors level courses. So students who will meet the criteria will request 
geometry honors when they do those initial course selections in a couple weeks. In science, so eighth grade science students need to achieve a final average of 92 as well as doing a 92 on that final exam. So if they're in eighth grade science, a 92 or better. And if they're currently in living environment slash biology or earth science, students have to have a final average of 92 and a 92 or higher in that Regents exam. And at this point, we do expect to have Regents exams this June. Um, and then you'll see there that if we don't, which I think we're, our students are hoping for, like when we're here, um, they would have to have permission from the instructor. And again, students will self-select if they meet that criteria, the honors level course when they do program planning. <clears throat> For English, to be considered for honors English, students have to have an eighth grade ELA grade of equal to, equal to or greater than 90. And then students who fall a little bit below that are department chair in the high school. Um, if the student really is interested and motivated and just fell a little short, um, we, you know, we understand that students are dealing with right things this year that they haven't had to deal with in the past, transitioning back to school after being home and learning from home. And, and a lot of things like that. So our, our English chairperson could review students' requests who don't meet that criteria. Um, there is summer work for this course as well. And um, students have the right to petition if they weren't accepted. Again, a very challenging class, English honors. So students have to be ready to work hard, do the summer assignment, and just keep up with that pace. Um, so for some students, that's OK. And some students just say, you know what, English isn't a strength and I need to maybe be in a, in a different level course. I'm not ready for that level yet. All right, and then additional course offerings is where Ms. Whiting will um, continue our presentation. Good evening, I'm, I'm Jacelyn Whiting. Thank you again for coming out tonight and listening to our presentation. I know it's a lot of information to absorb all in one night, um, but we are trying to record our presentation tonight, so if you need to go back and listen again and look through your notes, we hope to make that available to you as well. Um, with our additional course options for freshman students coming in, the Biology World class um, is an additional option for students that might need a bit of a modified curriculum for science. The Biology World class is still a Regents level science, However, it offers students an extra day to work on their labs. Our living environment class has two days out of the six day cycle for labs, whereas the biology world class has three days out of the six day cycle for labs. So this is pretty important for students that might need just that little bit of an extra cushion with science because it helps them get through the curriculum so that they're ready for the Regents exam at the end of that year. Following Biology World, we have a class called Planet Earth, which follows the Earth Science New York State Regents curriculum. And just as with Bio World, the Planet Earth class also offers students an extra lab period so that they have extra time to get through the curriculum and be ready for the Regents exam. Uh, Mrs. Lenz talked a little bit about math. Usually incoming ninth grade students begin with algebra. And after algebra in ninth grade, they can go in a couple different directions with geometry. We have a Regents level geometry. Um, the course up on the screen here, Geometry NR, that's a non Regents level geometry course, meaning that students can enroll in this course, earn their credit towards graduation, but not have to sit for the Regents exam. So that, those are some options that we do have with the students. And each year that they're in the high school, when they choose their courses, we first meet with them in classrooms in large groups, but then we have individual meetings with them. And that's where we're having really personal discussions with them about what will be the best fit for you from year to year. Will, where will you be the most successful? We also have a lot of new courses that have been introduced over the last couple of years. Um, just a few years back, there was a huge building project that took place here. This auditorium didn't look anything like it does right now. Um, this was part of the building project. 
And right behind us, behind this auditorium, there's a hallway where new technology classrooms are now present. We have so much new and updated equipment. Um, we're very happy to be able to offer a lot of STEAM courses, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So we do have a cybersecurity and computer technology pathway for students who really love computer science and want to know more about that field. The first course they would enroll in is called Discovering Computer Science. It's a full year course. That means that they'll earn one credit in that class. And as they go through high school, eventually they will end up taking a college level course through Syracuse University. We also have a class called Drawing and Design for Production in our technology department. And um, it's a pretty popular class. It actually can be used to fulfill the required art requirement for New York State. Um, and then we also have robotics, which is relatively new to us over the last couple of years. That's also a full year course for students that are interested in uh, programming and building robots. Um, and no prior experience is needed for that class. That would be considered an elective. We do offer a lot of additional support at the high school. So for students who are in special education, IEP or 504, um, we do, just as they do at the middle school, we do have a case manager for each student here at the high school. Currently, I know the middle school is holding their annual reviews where they're talking about making a plan for, as the students come up to the high school and they're making recommendations as to which courses they should be in. So that happens every single year while your child is here at the high school as well. We also have academic intervention services. And on my next slide, I'll, I'll show you which subjects we offer that in. But academic intervention services offers, offers the students extra support in specific subject areas to help them build their skills, to help them be successful, and to help them gain the skills so that they can be um, earning the credit that they need towards graduation. We also have um, a very small tutor program through our evening high school program. Currently, our evening high school program takes place between the hours of three and five right here at the high school. Again, it's a place where students can get a lot of extra support if they're struggling in a certain area or if they've fallen behind in their coursework. They are able to come to our program in the evening, afternoon, um, and get some additional help from a teacher. So with academic intervention, we have, we have um, services in English, global history, that's in ninth grade and 10th grade, in math for algebra and geometry, and in science for earth science and living environment. And the AIS classes, um, they would run every other day. So just as, as an example, if your student was in an AIS English class, it might be opposite their phys ed class, it might be opposite a science lab, but the AIS are every other day classes. During um, junior year, students are able to look into the CTEC programs. They actually start looking into them during 10th grade. Uh, we just visit our visited with our 10th grade students last week and they heard a presentation about the CTEC programs. So your students, when they are in 10th grade, they'll be able to hear about all the different programs that are available through CTEC. And if they're interested, um, they actually go on a visit and they can see what the CTEC programs are all about. The students don't begin this program until their junior year. The programs are two-year programs. So they would be junior year and senior year that they would be going there. And we are looking for students' attendance we want to make sure that they're on track with their credits towards graduation, that they have a good disciplinary record, um, and that they have a genuine interest in these programs. When your students come to the high school, um, there are so many activities that they can get involved with, and we really, really encourage them to try something new. We have so many different sports teams. We have lots of different clubs. 
And most of the clubs and activities don't begin until after period 10 is over. So a lot of students who are um, playing sports or staying for a club, chances are they're going back to a teacher anyway, maybe to get their homework done, maybe to get some extra help, and then they're able to go on and meet with the coach for practice or go to their club meeting. So this is a listing of all the clubs and activities that we have available at the high school. And as you can see, we have quite a big offering there. We also have all the different sports through the fall, spring, and winter seasons. Um, the fall sports, just to make note for your summer plans, the fall sports usually start in the middle of August and students are required to have a physical prior to playing any high school sport. And I do, you know, I did want to mention that the fall sports do start early in August in case you are making any summer plans. We have a lot of information, even this information that we covered tonight, a lot of this is noted on the Goshen High School website. And um, these are some of the topics that we do have listed. We try to keep this updated as, as much as possible, um, but we have information about course offerings, summer programs, SAT, PSAT. Later on, they're gonna be looking into this about college and future college planning. And we have lots of information even about um, college testing, career planning, financial aid, scholarships. These things come a little bit later on in their high school career, but we do wanna let you know that we do have this information posted there now. While your students are in high school, you're going to hear about a program called Naviance, and you'll have access to this as well. Naviance is a, is a college and career planning program that we use with the students beginning in ninth grade, and we use it all the way through their senior year. Um, beginning in ninth grade, we have the students take a very basic survey about what they're interested in. And this helps them to start thinking about what courses they might wanna take over the next few years, potentially what career they might wanna get into, or maybe even a college major. Um, we do another survey with them in sophomore year. And then in their junior year, we use this program to start searching for colleges. And then we also use this program with them in their senior year when they're actually submitting college applications. So essentially we're using this program with them all four years. They will have their own student account and you as parents and guardians will also have access to this. You can have your own account as well. This is a little screenshot of what the Naviance student welcome page looks like. Um, so this student right here, if this student were a senior working on this, you can see that a student can actually start a college search. And this is a great place for them to start and then just start, keep a list of colleges that they might be looking at. So this, this wouldn't be something they're doing in ninth grade necessarily, but maybe later on towards the end of 10th and definitely into 11th and 12th. So we've covered a lot of information. I know um, many, many different topics that we covered, but if there are any general questions, you know, we, all four of us are here. If you have any general questions, we'd be happy to answer them. And if you have more individualized questions, you can certainly contact us by calling us or by emailing us. Our emails are available on the high school guidance page.